So we have scenarios where you're sitting on a nuclear stockpile to shame North Korea and are throwing peas at a giant robot crab on the off chance that there might be a bigger giant robot crab just around the corner. Also, the Wii totally has lasting appeal, Atari have released some good games, and Cliff Blazinski isn't an extremely sexy man. Ha ha ha, sorry. Engineering a scenario in which Mario can brutally beat the stupid out of Princess Peach while the crowd screams for blood is very satisfying. There's nothing about God of War that really needs changing, and all fits quite nicely together like furious bloodstained stickle bricks. I'm not a fanboy, yes you are. They thought we'd abandoned realism around the time Space Marine were stabbing dinosaurs on the planet Zog. And you know who I blame for all this? You. Yes, you, the public. Especially you, Adrian. That probably isn't your name, but it was worth it to mess with the heads of all the Adrians in the world. Combining that with whiz-bang shooty fun strikes me as trying to have one's cake and eat it, a phrase I've never really understood. I mean, I think it's perfectly reasonable to want to eat a cake that you have. There's not much else you can do with a cake, except maybe hide in one if you're a stripper. Sorry, lost my train of thought. Somebody once said that a politician is a person who can talk for hours and never actually say anything. If that's true, Hideo Kojima could run for government and be emperor of the universe by mid-afternoon. I mean, once you accept Lego Star Wars, where does it end? Playmobil Battlestar Galactica, Duplo Firefly, Meccano Dune. Yeah, I'm done milking that joke. I guess at first I'd. Wait, I've got another one. Stickle Bricks Babylon 5. What I'm saying is that I like games where the story and gameplay go hand in hand, while in most JRPGs the story and gameplay are kept either side of a wrought iron fence made of tigers. Those of you who are paying attention will no doubt notice that all these games are sequels, and for those of you who aren't paying attention. <laughs> Oi! Personally, I would slap George's hands away from the editing desk, give him a colouring book, then remake the prequel trilogy so that Darth Vader uses the Force to win breakdancing competitions and chokes to death anyone who utters the word midichlorians. First you take a low-paying part-time job which unlocks some higher-paying assassination submissions, there being lots of overlap in the industries of litter picking and professional murder. There's your inventory screen, your character screen, your alchemy screen, your glossary, your quest, your map, you have to switch between combat mode and stand around picking your nose while enemies carve you like turducken mode, and once you're in combat mode do you fight in strong, fast or group style, and if you'll be wanting to mix potions, then I hope you've gone through the necessary eight-week correspondence course. If Silent Hill 5 convinces me otherwise, then I will remove three of my own vertebrae, curl my spine back, and eat my own ass. It's gratifying to see Capcom continue their proud tradition of unintentionally hilarious dialogue. I have a bad feeling about this, announces Jill Valentine after having been repeatedly savaged by the undead, demonstrating her vital intuitive ability to sense danger about an hour after it has commenced, while mercenaries are unstoppable immortal badasses who make tons more money and like it rough from men with hairy bums. No, bad yate! I meant to say, and you get to wear funky skull masks like it's Halloween every day, except that it's you giving out the candy and the candy is bullets. Oh yeah, and some guns take so long to reload that it'd be faster just to send off for a new one by mail order. You couldn't get away with releasing a buggy game in the cartridge in cassette days, he'd get sentenced to trampling under the company Brontosaurus. But I'll tell you the worst part about best 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 part and whistled for a baboon.